Kamala Harris just unveiled her new economic plan, and much like this sweater, it looks great online, but when it arrives, you're like, what do I do with this? She loves big government. I don't really trust big government. I'm very libertarian in that way. So you do realize that, that should be the official Libertarian Party slogan, right? Libertarians, our policies look great online, but when they show up, we've got no idea what to do with them. That is quite probably the most accurate description of libertarians I think I've ever heard. But libertarians also have no self-awareness and are completely out of touch with reality, so the fact that you said that completely unironically tracks, actually. Oh, sir, that's not how this works. That's, that's not how any of this works. In fact, there is absolutely no libertarian economic platform I've ever heard of that has passed any form of economic scrutiny or just, just basic math. Sounding good on paper is all libertarians have. That's why the only people who are libertarians are rich fucks who just don't want to pay taxes for anything. And white college-age dude bros who have no understanding of political or economic theory, but they still think that people should hear their pizza cutter opinions. You know, all edge, no point, and they're easily fooled by what looks good online. Anyway, uh, do go on. She cast a tie-breaking vote for the American Rescue plan and the Inflation Reduction Act, which cost over $3 trillion. Say that like it's a bad thing. You do realize that that's how economic recovery plans work. This this hasn't been new information since the New Deal. Right now, America is broke as a joke. We are $35 trillion in debt and Kamala has no plan to address it. She doesn't even want to talk about it. Interest on the national debt is going to cripple my generation in my lifetime. We're never going to get out of debt. It's not how, how any of that works. The United States isn't like your credit card where you spend too much money on ugly sweaters and then suddenly you can't pay your rent. And to do that, they they have to go along with our pretend money having value. But you know, that's all a little too complicated for this whole thing, so I won't get too deep into that. Now, there is certainly reasons to be mindful of the debt and the deficit. None of the reasons that you think are reasons, but there is reason. You know, if the debt on this topic is the hill you really want to die on, I really suggest you start picking out which wood you think makes the best looking box. I don't know how to break this to you, but the over $8 trillion Trump added to the national debt is more than double what the Biden-Harris administration has added. Even if you separate out COVID relief spending, which I'm sure you have lots of little libertarian feelings about, Trump added twice as much debt. And Biden's debt would be even less if his economic policy hadn't been and hobbled by Trump's Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. You know, the thing that literally every single economist said was going to skyrocket the national debt. And it's not just Trump. Every single conservative economic policy in our nation's history has increased the debt and deficit. It just laws of probability somewhere along the line you guys should have had a win. How are you that bad at the economy? Did y'all leave your calculator face down so the little solar thing couldn't charge the battery and then you just guessed at it? There's gotta be some explanation for how you guys have sucked this bad for this long and still continue to speak this confidently on the subject. Anyway, moving on. One thing Kamala says she really wants to address when she gets in office, she forgets she's been in office for years, but nonetheless, is price gouging. You do realize that, like, the president and the vice president are different, so she's not, like, like in office. Like, she's not currently signing bills into laws at the, at the moment. Do we need to bust out the Schoolhouse Rock video again? As I said, Kamala wants more big government. She wants to weaponize three-letter agencies to go after businesses, to level penalties against them using attorney generals across the country. This is abject insanity. No, it's antitrust laws. We've had them for a long time now, and they, and they work pretty well. It's abject insanity that you don't know that. Okay, so so far history, civics, economics, and math, not your strong point, but maybe this next point will be a winner. So Comrade Kamala has the audacity to tell you how to run your business when they can't even run the government in Washington, D.C. Someone who has $35 trillion in debt should not be dictating to businesses how they should run themselves. Again, the national debt, not the same type of debt as the type of debt that causes all of Donald Trump's businesses to go bankrupt. And it's not telling businesses how they can or can't run their business. It's just telling them that in the process of running their business, there's a few ways that they're not allowed to defraud, exploit, harm, or kill the American people. That's all. It's kind of like how the government doesn't tell you how to parent your children. They just tell you that the parenting technique you choose cannot involve beating little Jimmy to death because he didn't clean his room when you asked. Even the Washington Post said this. When your opponent calls you communist, maybe don't propose price controls. That's not the Washington Post. That's an op-ed in the Washington Post. You do understand what an opinion piece is, right? It was also written by Catherine Rampell, who has yet to explain why anybody should give a shit about her opinion. Be that as it may, what's your point here? Because you all call literally everything you don't like communist. And guess what? Nobody cares anymore. The boomers are dying and McCarthyism is dying with them. Calling everything you don't like a word you don't understand because you think it's scary doesn't have the effect you think it has anymore. And that's because most of us aren't dumb enough now in the United States to think that anything in this country even remotely resembles communism. And the reality is that almost everybody in this country, whether they know it or want to admit it, wish that our policies were a little bit closer to communism than anything Kamala will ever offer. So you can stop trembling about the scary C word. You're going to build up a shocking amount of static 
like in that little sweater of yours. One thing I also have to remind you guys is that Tim Walls, Kamala Harris's running mate, said one person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. Do I really need to Minnesota nice translate that for you? He was saying that you're a fucking asshole for thinking that feeding kids and giving them access to feminine hygiene products was a bad thing. He was calling you a dick. He was just doing it in a way that wouldn't make you feel bad about him calling you a dick. He was also calling you an idiot by reminding you that you have no idea what socialism actually means, but we've kind of already been over that. The fact of the matter is, when CNN, The Washington Post, and major economic experts are saying Kamala Harris's plan is not feasible, you have to listen and take a moment and think about it. Are the major economic experts in the room with us right now? Because I, I, I don't see them. Maybe they're hiding behind the communism. I don't see that either, but you know, anything's possible. Everything Kamala is proposing looks and sounds great. I understand why millions of young people are eating it up. When she talks about 25000 for first-time homeowners, it sounds great on face value. When I hear 25000 to first-time homeowners, I see the price of homes increasing by 25000 When I hear Kamala Harris and Tim Walls talk about building rental units, it sounds great on paper, but I also think about you will own nothing and be happy. And when I hear you talk, I hear you talk a lot about your feelings, which you know are not based even remotely in reality. Which is why all you've cited is an opinion piece and major economic experts you conveniently forgot to name. Look, I go on with this all day. Like how a $25,000 first-time homebuyer tax credit, which has been a policy that's been done lots of times before with great success, wouldn't raise housing prices by $25,000 because it's only applicable to a small percentage of home buyers. In fact, it would actually bring down housing prices because it would make investment buyers that are driving up the prices less competitive, and it would increase market demand for starter homes, incentivizing contractors to build more of them. Because, you know, that's how, how capitalism works. And you wouldn't understand that because you're clearly much more worried about your feelings than facts. And I know we're supposed to be in tune with our feelings, but I don't think this is how they meant that. Anyway, I think we all get the point. Well, most of us. All I'm saying is that if the debt's what you're worried about, maybe vote for the candidate that didn't add more to the national debt than any president in history. And if you want to talk policy, maybe actually learn what the policy is first. Or at least the very basic definitions of simple words, like, you know, communism. And in the spirit of each according to his ability to each according to his needs, those tips I redistributed to you are free, comrade. Because us progressives are all about helping those in need.